Good morning. Welcome to the garden. All right. So today we've got some cool changes to tell you about. Um, yeah, this area right here, don't look at it because I don't have the, the mowing under control yet. Um, we've got 90% of it, but this area still has to be done and I'm going to stop and mow this before it gets out of hand again. So we have our onions. The top sets are ready to harvest. I'm going to harvest some of these and take these to town. Um, and once we take them to town, we've got uh, several schools that are going to throw them down and the kids won't have to worry about planting onions every year. They can just simply harvest um, and it will harvest in the winter while they're still in school. That's part of the problem with having the greenhouses. Um, some of the things have to be started in spring and then they go over summer. So when they come back in the fall, so it's, it, it gets kind of tough. These onions are something that they can put down, leave and forget about. You'll notice that along the brick here, we have a hidden symbol and we have another symbol over here, not so hidden. That is what the girls are working on. I'll tell you about that here in a little bit. If you look, we have our cucumbers. Now, what we figured out, that whatever variety this is that the kids planted, turns yellow when it's ripe. This one is almost ripe. It's not quite. Um, they actually can turn a bright orange. So, yeah, I, I kind of like that. It, it's just different. I haven't watered this morning because I keep getting sidetracked. I've, this is actually take two because I got interrupted in the middle and we don't edit, so I just started over. Uh, the tomatoes are starting to come along. The basil, I know that they have to get a little bit um, bigger leaves, so yeah. And I'm actually thinking I might take some of these plants out and put them someplace else. I don't know yet. But anyway, then we've got strawberries. Each day, RJ comes down and he gets a little bowlful um, out of between this garden, that bed, and that bed down there. Him and the pig have a nice little snack out of it each day. You can see we've got some more over here, more there, um, some down in there. They're, they're really starting to come along. So he's enjoying having those strawberries every afternoon. So, and he comes down and picks them himself, so I'm good with that. This bed, it still needs to be weeded. I did start on this side, and then the girls were down here and we got sidetracked. And Anyway, there's another one of the little hidden things there. The xylophone has now moved down here and gotten away from the tree that we don't feel is safe to have kids around. And on the back of it, you don't need to see this, there's a little rainbow back there. Um, and I'll tell you more about those. The peach tree! Okay, so I know that there's one lady that watches and uh, she has peach trees and maybe she can help us out with whatever's going on in this booger. Um, we have noticed that each, look here, see, see that right there? There's a little bug that's going in there and it creates one of those little things and then slowly the whole thing starts to go bad and then it ends up looking like that. Um, I cut one open and the bug goes all the way down to the stone. Let me get you one down here. Look here. A lot of them look like this. And see, there's the bubble thing where the bug is, and then it goes down, and it gets to the stone. And pretty much, they just die. Um, and I thought, I found a couple that just had little spots on them like that, and I thought, oh, I can just cut that away. Uh, but the truth is, is whatever bug that is goes down into the stone, and the whole center is rotten around it. So I, I don't feel safe using them. See, look, here's one. And see, it's got just that brown. Um, let me look and see if we can find one with the start of it. There's another one up there. And we have tons of them. Look at that. I haven't sprayed. Okay. I don't know what we can use that wouldn't be poison. Um, I'm not above chemical, but I'd like to explore. First, I need to find out what this bug is. And then, secondly, I need to figure out how to stop it. And if it can be done organically, yes. If it can't, well, then I might have to actually spray. I know it sounds sad, but I'd rather have food and have my peaches than um, give them all to the bugs. So, I don't know what kind of bug that is, but it starts out a little hole, and it just... See, here's one 
that little spot right there, I don't know if you can even see that in the camera, is what they start as and it gets worse. So, I don't know. Anyway, our broke spot will be trimmed off next fall or next winter. We're pretty much, the, the peaches on it are not surviving. Uh, kind of a given, but I was praying. You know, it's like, oh please, let them make it. They're not, they're all over the ground. So we're losing more peaches than we can save. And RJ and I came out here and tried to harvest them. They're too hard. They're too everything. Um, we have a lady that watched. She said if they just fall off in your hand. Well, these are falling off in our hands because of the bug, not because of them being ripe. So we're having our issues with the peach tree. I really, really was hoping that we'd have peach. And see, looky here. Here's another one. You see all that stuff oozing out of it? It's gross. So anyway. The bench is now down here, again, here's one of these little things that the girls left, along with their handprints. They've decided they're going to put their mark on the garden. Uh, Ashley's is in the center there, Belle's is there. Ashley has a huge hand, so finding places to put her hand was funny. Um, the spinach is taking off. Um, I don't know what is optimal size to harvest this, but I'm going to uh, find out from a girlfriend of mine and see. And it's self sowing so if you see it's going all the way up here i'm happy with that it's really thriving with the morning dew and that so we'll see how it does and if i can just get one side covered then the other side will cover next year so i'm good with that too and again another little hidden treasure for the kids this peach tree is doing amazing remember they told me it was dead and it would never do any good um it seems to be coming back and it's amazing so that means this one will come back too I know it will I just have my thoughts on the matter but uh, it had a couple of little apples on it and they're up there they're not doing great but they're up there and we're okay with that so um, it'll grow some more next week next week <laughs> next year and welcome to the vine city it's taking over. All right, so we have in here honeydew melon, which has all kinds of blooms on it, okay? And actually, here's the deal, guys. They're all intermixed. So I've got honeydew melon, which is these big leaves here. This, I think, is part of the watermelon, but I don't know which watermelon, because there's only two watermelon plants, I thought, and one was over there and one was over there. I'm not sure how it got over here, but... This shape of leaf tells me it's a watermelon. <sighs> yeah, more power to me. <laughs> I'm teasing. I, I joke now that I must have just walked through here and dropped seeds out of my pocket because nothing is where I planted it. It's not staying where it's supposed to stay. Oh, but it has blooms, okay? Everything seems to be having blooms right now. I'm good with that, so I'm not gonna trim anything back. Um, I know people say trim it back because that'll make it put into to growing better fruit. Well, right now it's got blooms everywhere, and I don't want to cut off any that are producing. Okay, just saying. See, there's blooms in there. There's blooms out there. I've got big blooms up there. Little blooms. Oh, I've got more cucumbers to harvest. Look in there. That's dragon's egg cucumbers. There's three, or four of them in there. I guess I missed them yesterday. I don't know, or they weren't ripe yesterday. Or they weren't there yesterday. I think they're just popping up as they come. But anyway, um, so we've got two honeydew melon here. This is the loofah gourds, and I'm to a point where I, I'm having trouble telling the loofahs from the others. This leaf is loofah. Well, let me show you. This leaf I know is loofah. This one looks different now. So I'm not sure if it's coming off that honeydew melon because it kind of looks more like the honeydew melon. And see, it's got <laughs> it's got flowers on it. I don't know. And let me show you, just so you know. This is the apple tree. There's the bench, okay? This is probably, oh, <laughs> an 8 foot by 16 foot space that was supposed to hold all of the vines and if you remember they didn't do very good i now have them way down here you know from this tip right here 
okay back to where it cut off last week okay which is right there you can tell where I've mowed it's probably a yardstick so we're talking it's grown three foot in a week on just a guesstimation okay and that's just using the longest point out here into there so that doesn't mean each one of them grew through it's just a, a average um, look here at this one and it was back there last time look at all this out here I feel like I'm in that little Scooby-Doo movie where it has that big pumpkin that has all the vines that take over and the, the big pumpkin gets up and walks. I don't know if anybody watched Scooby-Doo when they were kids or RJ used to watch it. So this is what's left of my, what you can see of my solaring for the fall garden, which if these vines are not gone, I'm not ripping this up to do a fall garden, just saying. So let's see, what else do we have in here? I don't know what these vines are. I, I really don't. Um, this is watermelon, and these are watermelon right here. This, I, I'm guessing it could be the Luca gourds from up there. I'm, I'm really not sure. Um, the bell peppers are struggling to stay in the sun. You can tell here the vines have taken over them. Let's see, here's another one. And I'm actually stepping on vines because they weren't out that far last time I was through here. So there's another bell pepper and then the other one is right in here and it's yeah and then that mystery I don't know I'm gonna say probably is zucchini squash or eggplant or something and see it's huge. So I joke and say I must just walk through here without with my uh, seeds in my pocket because yeah it's it is what it is I'm trying but Honestly, I know it looks like a mess. I'm not even going to pretend that it doesn't. And yes, I'm trying to train my vines to go up a little bit. Um, I'm not even going to pretend like I'm not excited. Because honestly, I am. Okay, if you follow us at all, you know gardening is not my thing. Um, I'm not very good at it. So, um, to have... Oh, and there's some more. Boy, oh, there's some on both sides. Look at that. There's one over there, some over there. Oh, there's more down there. Look at that. Look at that. I'm going to have cucumbers everywhere. And I just did. I pickled some because I'm running out of things to do with the cucumbers. <laughs> just saying. So I tried my hand at pickling yesterday. Anyway, I know this looks like a mess. And I know you guys are going, oh my gosh, this woman. But I am super stoked because I'm growing something. I have a garden. It might not be as organized as anybody else's. It might not be as pretty. It might be vines going everywhere and it might look like a heap of weeds to everyone else. But I am super excited because I'm growing something. It comes down to that. I'm growing something. And uh, I'm okay with that. i got to do my other little vine here. I think these little things just look too cool. <laughs> They're the little springies that you know train the vines or whatever and when they don't have any place to go they get straight <laughs> and yes I just kind of put them up there but anyway and these guys right here are my good vines because they are the only ones that have listened to me and gone the way they're supposed to if you look we got vines out here and look at how much fruit we have on that just look at all those those are going to be um, cucumbers look at that there's already some on there this is a very prolific producer and it's those dragon eggs um, cucumbers you don't have to peel them super amazing I, I've been just cutting them up and eating them probably too many at a time the girls and I came through here and we were going to take down this stuff but then we found out a vine had grown through there so I'm going to come back and just take all of those down and that down and just leave that one so anyway and there's another little hidden flower for the kids, which I'll explain here as soon as we get down to the other end. Um, so this is Attack of the Vine. I'm happy with it. I know it sounds silly, but I'm okay with that. Um, pear trees, it, it's a little late. I, I'm pretty sure it's because we lost a lot of our blooms in the storms. So some, there's a few pears. It'll be okay. Might get a jar or two. I don't know. Pear, uh, I've got an apple cinnamon pear recipe I love to do with a drop top. Oh. Okay, this is a box that we got as a gift from a friend who was going to toss it. Um, 
and we're going to put our hose in there. One of the soaker hoses is already in there. I have some more soaker hoses, but we're waiting for it to dry out a little bit. And he just had it for storage, and he had two of them. A girlfriend of mine got the other one, and I got this one. Uh, if you look, there's a horseshoe on that and the thing. The clear that you see over it is the girls used a clear coat like spray varnish or lacquer or whatever you call it over them so that the weather wouldn't take them off okay so we've got a little green flower down here this still isn't draining the rosemary has pretty much died i don't know what we're gonna do about that um all of these tubs were done the same that's the only one that won't drain and we actually took it apart drilled more holes in it and redid it so don't know Lavender's doing great. My tomato, look, I have little bitty tomatoes on there. This poor plant has been beat by the hail. It has been um, knocked over in wind. It has done all kinds of horrible, horrible things, and it's still producing tomatoes. Woohoo! Not a great amount, but I have tomatoes. Um, yeah, the catnip, like I said, I, I seeds are everywhere. The catnip is still in there. I'm pretty sure it's not going to make it because it's slowly dying out, but... We have more vines going down this way. What that's going to be, I don't know. Um, it is what it is. The time is, it's struggling, but it's staying alive. And as long as I can keep it alive till next year, it, it self sows and comes back. So it's perennial. I, I'm okay with that. Let all these little seeds from these white ones do down there. And then we won't have any whatever in here. But look what we have in there right now. It's some kind of squash. I don't know how to tell when it's ready, but I don't even know what it's supposed to look like when it's ready, but there it is. Um, the zucchini. This side took a pretty big beating from the hail, um, but it's still putting on blooms and stuff. So it looks bad, but it is what it is. I'm going to water it and see if we can't keep it going. We've gotten zucchini out of there, oh, for a couple of days now. And uh, I actually made some zucchini, pineapple, strawberry jelly, and or jam, and it's amazing. Oh my gosh, I, I oh that stuff is amazing. I love it. All right, so again, another little doodad, which I am about to explain. So the girls came out and they wanted to leave their mark on the garden. We worked to get all the stuff down here that we had. They sent up a lunch center for bird watching so it's kind of like a two-in-one you can sit here and eat your lunch um, snack there's a little table over there to put whatever project if you want to do um, we thought about doing maybe having kits out here to make bird houses whatever and you could actually watch the birds when we get them um, I've got to get some feed in the feeders and we've got to get some wool in that one and then we're gonna move the hummingbird feeder down here too I think so anyway we're gonna have that then of course we have this over here which is the fire pit and they, this is a relaxation nighttime center um bell finished our bench um and her and ashley put their marks on it um we had some spilling going on so they just made it and lacquered it over like they had intended to so it is a purple and pink they said it looked like a, a spotted cow so fits right in we really don't care um pot of gold there potluck garden we're good to go um there's more strawberries there and, and like i said it's it's still producing rj comes down and gets out of both beds each night but one of the things that the girls wanted to do was have a treasure hunt we we have a treasure hunt in the barn um we have okay let me back up we have a scavenger hunt outside and then we have what we call nature's treasures on the inside and there's jars inside the barn that have things like bird nests in them wasp nests, um, different things that you find outside that most kids wouldn't be allowed to touch. So we have them in the barn for them to touch and explore and they're all in glass jars so they can see them and adults can actually take them down. There's rose rocks and all kinds of stuff in there. So um, a geode, I'm trying to think, mussel shells, all kinds of stuff. Well, they kind of wanted to do their own take on that. So those little things that you saw, the, the little card like plates were chalkboard things you're supposed to write like carrots across it and mark your carrots with it and I had two that I actually used and what happened is when it rains it washes them away so you can't um, 
see it anymore. So the girls decided to put these things and make a treasure hunt. Now there's actually, it's a two in one because over here on the big kid one, there's a pink square and these are supposed to glow in the dark. There is a pink circle, okay? They said I could use either one of those to put on the big kid one. I don't know if you can, down below. All right, so there's the pink square. And then they have other things like this is a purple moon and up there on one of those discs is a big blue moon. So the big kids have to go through the whole garden and find a color specific um, shape. So they would have to find like the purple moon. They also have to find the yellow horseshoe which is on the back of the toddler bench. But the toddlers can find this one. So it's big and it's bright and it's right here, you know, easy to find. Um, the big kids have to be specific, okay? That green flower was down there on the flower bed. And this right here, of course, all the little kid ones, it hasn't been weed eated, but they're easy to find once you, there we go. And so, okay, so the little kids would find that one. And all of the little kids are super easy to find. Um, one in the spinach. They call this from this side where that blue tub is over here, the toddler area, because there's the xylophone. They're going to put a, it's a debate of a water or a sand table right out here. And then the little kids can play hide and seek in the teepee. And I think the, the sand table they said is going to go right here. We are debating, and if you have children and have done this, we're making out of PVC pipe and a plastic tub, and we're going to have funnels across the top on a little thing. And um, we want to know, I don't like the thought of water because little kids playing in water that hasn't been covered or stale or whatever, it's kind of like yuck. But then if we put sand in there and it rains, it's going to fill up with sand and how do I drain it? So if you guys have any thoughts on how these water tables work with sand and how we can do it uh, with some sanitation <laughs> to it, that would be amazing. So like I said, the little sand table is going to be here. The little kids are down here. They've got their scavenger hunt. They've got a teepee to hide in. They've got their xylophone to play with. And then we'll have the sand or water table. Then the big kids, of course, have the gardens that they can do, um, swings to sit on. Um, we're going to have the beehive back there, and we're going to have a little greenhouse and um, that kind of stuff back there. Remember, that corner is going to be a little uh, shack, so um, that'll be big kid part. This will be the little kid part. Not saying the little kids can't go back to the big kid part, and not saying the big kids won't cut through there, but either way, we have it contained to they can just stay up here and their parents can sit and watch, you know, for the littler ones. So, anyway, other than that, the only thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to mow this tall stuff. As you can see, we, we still don't have that all under control. Um, with the rain being placed, that is two, well, almost, almost three weeks growth right now because this is a week to ten days growth. So, this, and you can see it, it's, it's pretty tall, you know, Oops. it's pretty tall, and uh, we've been concentrating on getting all of that done. Uh, the day before yesterday, RJ mowed that far section back there, so it was picture perfect, and now you can definitely see where we have and haven't mowed, you know, so I'm going to do this big old open space so that it all looks like one today if I don't poop out. So anyway, there's a garden update. Thanks for joining me. Um, hopefully by the next time we come, we might have a some kind of sand table in place or a water table or I don't know. There has to be a way to drain it or something. I don't, I don't know. We'll work on it. See you next time.